bit scared of going against the same. <laughs> what do you want, Witcher? Did you participate in the battle? I did. And I fought. But I'd rather not go into it. The spirits of those who died in battle are now in combat on that field. They kill each other and change into nasty creatures called Draugrs. Adernians, Kedwenis, even your comrades. I want to help them, but I have to know what happened during the battle. Oh, the plague. Listen, then. The fighting started in the afternoon. The Dun Banner was first to attack. We were ambushed, cut off from our main unit and devastated. Bloody scouts and Sabrina Glevesic, who was supposed to mine the battlefield. By then, the battle was in full swing. Wherever you see those damned furrows, people fought there. The Adernian lines faltered a few times, but we couldn't crush them because of Selkirk. Yes, we had the visitor. They had Selkirk of Gullet, the invincible White Knight, Edern's finest swordsman. Whenever our forces gained the upper hand, he'd appear and reverse the fighting's course. Then, Vandergrift himself went into battle. He met Selkirk in the middle of the melee. It was a battle of titans. In the end, the visitor hacked Selkirk and sliced the White Knight from his head to his balls. Then, death fell from the heavens. Lumps of burning soil flew through the air. The whole valley was on fire. Damned magic of a damned witch! I owe my life to Priest Crest, our chaplain. He led me out of the battle and went back for the others. He had a medallion that protected him against fire. He led everyone out, including the Adernians. But the flames got him in the end. What happened before the battle? We forded the Pontar on the third day after the autumn equinox. The Adernians were waiting for us, formed up in a long line at the foot of those hills. I remember the banners of Wengerberg, Aldersburg, Gullet. Knights, armoured infantry, peasants, the Vergen Dwarf Regiment, all save the King. They numbered more than 5,000. General Vandergrift, commander of the Kedwenis, had less than 4,000, including the elite bearheads, armoured troops from Ard Kareig, and the famous White Foxes of the North. And ourselves, the Dun Banner, veterans of Brenner, hated by the Adernians more than the plague. But above all, we had Vandergriff the Visitor. Maybe he was a bastard, but he knew war like nobody else. Do I have this right? You served in the Dun Banner? Did indeed. Henselt's never commanded a fiercer group of warriors, and he never will. If not for us, there'll be no victory for the North at Brenner. We carried the day. I didn't see the Dun Banner in the camp. And you won't. The unit's no more. Ensign Eckhart Hennessy carried the standard into battle for the last time three years ago. Glevisig's magic? Worse. The Adernian troops, the bastards. The Dun Banner, the pride of Kedwin, lost its standard and almost all its men. The Visitor refused to send us reinforcements when we were cut off. The Dun must prevail. It's been in worse shite than this. The Dun will be all right. Seven Adernians to each one of us. We had no fucking hope. Two hundred men went into battle and less than seventy came back. But that's not all. Only a few survived to this day. The boys couldn't handle it. Suicide, firewater, fistech. A few became highwaymen. They ended up on the gallows or in ditches. Memories can also kill you, and soldiers don't always deal with them well. I have to find that standard. I heard it lies in the catacombs neath Vergen, alongside my mates. Hey, if you're thinking of going there, I ought to give you my beaver skin cap. That's its rightful place. Did you see the duel between Saltkirk and Vandergrift? From a distance. At the time I was on that hill and they were somewhere over there. The field used to be as flat as a table. It was their second duel. Earlier, in peacetime, they'd met at a tournament in Ard Kareig. Saltkirk won then. Vandergrift's sword cracked and the visitor had to yield. After the tournament, he had a new sword forged by Kedwin's best mages and swordsmiths. That's how Lowethan came to be. 
I think that means hatred in the Elder language. Pretty pretentious. They say a sorcerer cast a spell on the sword and told Vandergrift the blade wouldn't crack as long as he remained invincible. The mage got fifty lashes and was the last to mention any such nonsense. Who has Vandergrift's sword now? When the Sea of Flames died out, the looters ran amok. They found Selkirk's chain mail, which survived somehow. Maybe it was magical too. Vandergrift's sword went missing. The boys in the camp claim the female dragon slayer has it, but I wouldn't even try talking to her. Who's got Selkirk's chainmail? Uh, a certain Vincent Trot. Low nobility, in the army since forever, a greedy bastard. Where can I find him? That's a problem. Deathmold wanted him arrested after they found a square coin on him. Some of the officers and noblemen want to get rid of the Black Ones. They don't like how they lord it around the camp, even though the King talks to them. Those coins are their sign, the stupid bunch of plotters. Anyway, Vincent's a swashbuckler. He thrashed Deathmold's people and disappeared. Those with the coins won't say a word because they're scared of Deathmold. Thanks, Civic. There's a soldier by the inn selling scraps from Sabrina's execution site. I know. The damn quartermaster. This business of his muddles the minds of the soldiers. Suddenly, everyone believes a splinter in your pocket will protect you in battle. Half wits. After what happened here three years ago, it's no surprise they're terrified. I'll tell you one thing, Witcher. In combat, I can count on my shield, my armor and my comrades, if they still live. Many of those boys will die in Vergen, even with their pockets stuffed with mystical splinters that cost a silver piece each. I want them to be afraid. When steel hits steel, I want them to be alert, damn it! If they're dumb and put their trust in rusty nails and ashes, they won't have a hope in hell. I heard there's a man living outside the camp known as the Visionary. Ever met him? The soldiers talk about him, but I've never seen him. If I ever do, he'll regret that he fooled my people with all those superstitions. Did you see Sabrina's execution? Wish I could have, but only the fifth company was sent there. She deserved it. What she did to the boys. Believe me, I've seen a lot of monstrosities in my life. My brother died during a coup in Rhind when a mage boiled the blood in his veins. Also, I once saw a soldier raping a dead elf woman. But three years ago, people melted like lead. Something you can't forget, Witcher. From what I can see, you and the men love your king. He's like a father to us, really. Comes around from time to time, chats it up, pats you on the mug. Remembers our names, too. Though you got to earn that in battle. Been so distinguished three times already. Pride myself on it. I'm sure it's a great honor for a humble soldier like yourself. Last time it happened, we was on the march. Some peasant poisoned his well. A few of our lads died, many others got sick. I paf... Pas... Paf aside that village. We hit them so hard, we even struck fear into our own boys. They went without a row for two days, and the king was very pleased. He came around. Gave me a friendly punch in the gut, laughed, and said, You are one true son of a bitch. If you'd not been born among swine, you'd probably be king. That's how he is. Humane and all. He's really got a heart. So long. It's Geralt of Rivia and Zoltan Chive. Pinch me, Burden, for I believe I've dozed off while in duty. Could be an illusion, eh? Or some spectres from the battlefield have lost their way. Maybe we ought to tickle them with an axe, just to be sure. 
I'm afraid there's no mage out there who can conjure up the witcher's mug, nor the aroma of Zoltan's beer-soaked beard. <laughs> Yarpen Zigrin. Lice eat me if I'm not delighted to see that horrid mug of yours. <laughs> this lad here's scale and burden. Geralt, what are you doing standing there as if you've swallowed a halberd? Got a hug for an old mate! Greetings. Triss has told me a lot about you. We Merigold? Ha! How is the lass? Let me tell you, Scalen. This here witch has the very embodiment of chivalry. All the silk cooks of the world can't hold a candle to him. And you know why? No, but I got a feeling we're about to find out. Me? A knight? I'd sooner call Zoltan a show dancer. Well then, listen everyone. At the time, we were escorting Kainwani army convoys through the Sherwood forests. Aye, aye, we served Hensel once, but all was for coin. Anyways, the Witcher was on the road as well, with Triss and Ciri, heading south. The lass, I tell you, was a demoness incarnate. Pure pepper on her feet, and healthy as a horse. But the sorceress fell ill. Some terrible pestilence held her, gave her the runs. That woman needed to go every five minutes. Never seen anything like it. And I've had my share of gut rumblings. This one time, I roasted an old ailing gerbil and... Oi! You promised us a chivalrous tale. And I'm delivering it, lad. In any case, the witcher would carry her into the bushes time after time. He treated and cared for her. Cleaned her. Bathed her. Sounds normal to me. A man looking after his woman. It's too much to call it chivalrous, Yarpin. Ha! Ah, wrong. Triss weren't his woman. Not his wife, nor lover. She was sick and in need of aid. And he was on a secret mission. Might have left her in some city, might have gone off on his own. But he didn't. Know why? Because he's got a heart of gold. He truly cares. A lad like you, Scalin. Don't know that being a knight's not just about thrashing around in full plate, a long sword in hand. It's not just about fighting duels and winning tournaments. Damn! I missed hearing your bullshit, Sigrun. Hmm, I don't believe anyone else has tried to tell me that story. How is the wee Merigold, anyway? Not great. The Kingslayer kidnapped her. Oh, damn the dogs! That's downright terrible. I suppose it's no coincidence you're here. It's nice to talk to you all, but we've got things to do. Ah, that's life. Open the gate. I've got to fetch me a certain sword. Wait a minute. If by some miracle you obtain that cursed blade, I'd advise you not to parade it out the main gate past the squirrels. Got another solution? There's another passage. I'll mark it in the Witcher's map and show you myself. Sound all right to you? It does. In the meantime, I'll look around for that flag. Pray, mighty. Off we go then.
Zoltan you were supposed to bring the sword. I failed, Geralt. That was not the best idea, Witcher. Dwarves are poor liars in general, and that's especially true of this one. You know everything you need to know? Yes. You need the weapon to lift the curse from Henselt and free the souls of the Fallen. Milady, I know you're at war with Henselt, but the curse threatens Vergen as well. It's a field of uncontrollable magic energy. No need to exert yourself. I know this. The sword shall be yours. Just like that? Yes. I'm glad to help and thank you on behalf of the Vergenes, the souls of whose loved ones will finally be granted the peace they have so long deserved. Thank you, and good luck. See you, Zoltan, and don't get killed. Nor you, you old prick. See you again. Someday. <clears throat> Saska, I forgot one wee thing. Geralt wishes to meet with Yorveth. He's got dealings with the elf. I need the head of the spear used to finish off Sabrina as she uttered the curse. Yorveth had it when we ran into each other in Flotsam. He lost it playing dice. Scalen now has the spearhead. The young Burden is a gambler, an addict, and perhaps Vergen's top shard. You should speak to him. Yorvith put that spearhead up as a bet? When it comes to getting folk to sit down to a game of poker, Scalen can be convincing. His pack is bulging with treasures. You'd be surprised. All one at dice. I won't need convincing. We'll see how he does against me. Farewell to you both.